Good morning Celtic fans and welcome back to the channel and in this morning's Celtic FC news is Angie Postacoglu about to get into a bidding war for a Tunisia player. Will Stephen Welsh leave Celtic and let's look at the comments section from Saturday and see what you were saying after the Celtic Aberdeen game and talking about the Celtic Aberdeen game we're going to look at some of the stats from the weekend. So this Main story this morning is, will Celtic get into a bidding war for Ch Tunisia midfield player that impressed in the World Cup? Celtic have been linked with him for a while, but his stock has risen as many players like Josep Juranovic, that their stock has risen during this World Cup. Will Celtic get into a bidding war? I don't think it's Ange Postacoglu's style to get into an actual bidding war for a player. I think he makes his mind up early if he wants a player, and it also makes his moves early, so it's suggesting to me, do we really need another midfield player? Who would we drop out in the midfield? And talking about Celtic FC transfer news, it's been reported that Stephen Welsh has been looked at by Porto. Porto have joined the race to sign the Celtic defender, according to a report, and Celtic could consider selling him in January. He's, kind of, he's, he's broken into the team a few times, but does he have it to make the top, top level? What do you think? Tell me in the comments. The defenders made just six appearances this season and the signing of Yoko Kobayashi could push him further down the pecking order behind Cameron Carter-Vickers and Carl Starfelt with Moritz Gents already in front of him. Now remember, Gents is just on loan. So the fact he's getting pushed out for a loan player and he's at that age where he really needs to be playing a lot of football. Now, there was a Celtic defender that left once a young player and he went on to bigger, better things and Celtic didn't sell him for enough. Will Celtic get the right money for Stephen if he leaves Celtic? This is the thing. Portuguese giants want to bring him to the club. Talking about Portugal, there's another Celtic player doing really well in Portugal just now, but he's also been tracked, Welsh has also been tracked by clubs in England and Italy and France, so he does have a number of options. Will he leave, should he leave Celtic this, this Christmas? There's a lot of talk about players leaving, and we have got two players in already. Toulouse, they're amongst the clubs that could come back for him. They had a, re a bid rejected in the summer, Toulouse, um, where Ange Postacoglu thought he, they would really need him as a player. But he's obviously went down the pecking order. So what do you think about Stephen Welsh? Tell me that in the comments. Should he stay or should Celtic just sell him? Do we have? Is he good enough to make it in the top flight? Um, when you look at the way that Celtic's going, does Stephen Welsh have it? What do you think? Anyway, moving on. We have spoke roughly about Alistair Johnson. He's came in and Yoko Kubiashi. He's also came in who's strengthened the squad. To me, it says Welsh is on his way out the door. So let's have a quick look at the comment section and see what you were saying with the game. I hope you enjoyed the live after the Aberdeen game at the weekend. In fact, first of all, we're going to look at the stats from the weekend. So the ball possession, Celtic had 71% possession of the ball at the weekend with just the one goal for all that possession. They were expected three goals from Celtic. They had 30 shots 30 shots with only 7 shots on target and I bet most of those shots came in the second half. That was a 23% shot on target ratio. There was only the one yellow card in the game and that was for Aberdeen. So talking about that, we go into the, the section. Um, yes, Robbie2223. Great video boys on behalf of Robbie and Brian Hogg, CSC. Tipperary, Merry Christmas and I hope to see you soon. Hale 551 says, Mickey the Myth will know what the other team is soon. Talking about the Sevco and the manager and the disrespectful comment that he made about Celtic just calling us the other team. Well, we've been calling him Sevco. He can call us what he wants, really, because they're not going to do anything and he's going to get chased out the door this summer. Mark Yule said, just watch this today, but seriously, too many negative Celtic fans nowadays. Celtic completely dominated the game it's easy to, I will say, Mark, it's easy to dominate a game when the, the the team that you're facing doesn't want to cross the halfway line. Every other every Aberdeen player defended in their penalty box. Stop looking for negatives. There was no room to move. I think if you look back last year, I think you look at the at this time last year, we won the Cup this time last year, and the movement from the team and the players 
especially the likes of Kyogo, and it wasn't static in between two defenders, and I think that's what was a lot of the problem at the weekend. Kyogo was kind of a bit static, waiting to do runs off the shoulders of defenders, where last year he'd be whizzing about back and forwards, you know, not letting the defenders know which way he was going to go, which way he was going to run from. So maybe his game has just dropped off slightly. We know he does have goals in him, but you know, he's, he missed a couple of crackers at the weekend. We got the move, as you went on to say, we got the, we got the win. Let Aberdeen f sheep moan about their team. And uh, Gordon Smart, he said, lasagna's looking good in December. Eh, moan rahoops. Yeah, December, it is. It's nice this morning. It's a bit chilly in the morning, but it is nice weather at this time of year. Something today, says Kyogo and Jota were poor. And Gigi didn't touch a ball. I don't think uh, Gigi was on long enough to really make a massive impact in the game. Paul Baird, a regular comment and commenter as well on the channel, says hail hail. And the jabber of jobbies. <laughs> That's a YouTube name and a half, isn't it? Says brilliant, mate. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this video. So tell me in the comment section about Stephen Welsh. Do you think Stephen Welsh should leave Celtic? Will Angie Postacoglu, Angie Postacoglu get into a bidding war for Laduni? Um, a midfield player, do we really need another midfield player? I don't know, I don't think so. Anyway, will Georgios Guacamacus leave? I don't think he's going to leave this, this, this window, and I'm going to tell you why, because we've not really got a striker to back up Kyogo, so on that note, I don't think that he would leave Celtic. Will Juranovic leave Celtic this window? I'm actually starting to think that he won't. He might leave in the summer more than the window. I think it'll lay down something to, to the SPFL and to the world of football that Celtic are not just a team that is it's a selling club. We'll sell when we want to sell, not when teams come in. So on that note, I think Juranovic might pull a sneaky one here and he'll still be a Celtic player until the summer. So on that note, let's chat and debate it out in the comments section and I shall see you in the next video.